Hey everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help us out up here. And it really also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So we will be covering statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we're gonna be finding some reactions in today's video. And this will be the eighth part of our reaction series for statics. So what we have going on here is we have a gardener that uses a 12 pound wheelbarrow to transport a 50 pound bag of fertilizer. And it's asking what force must the gardener exert on each of the handles? So we have our diagram here where we have our 50 pound bag of fertilizer and the wheelbarrow's weight um, that is 12 pounds. And then we have our distances shown. So with this one, since it's a little bit of a more complex, complex in quotes there, um, complex picture, let's just draw a free body diagram of what we actually have going on here. So I'm just gonna draw the straight line for the wheelbarrow. And then I'm going to throw on my 50 pound bag. And then I'm going to throw on the wheelbarrow self weight of 12 pounds. And then down here at point A, since it is a wheel, this will be a roller type reaction here because it allows for movement in the left to right direction, but not in the vertical direction. And then here at the handles where she is grabbing the wheelbarrow, I'm just going to represent her hands as a pin and I'm going to call that point B. So, of course, we have our distances here, which would be six inches, six inches, and then 28 inches. So the only thing that this problem is asking is how much force must this person exert on the handle in order to lift it upwards? So essentially all we are looking for in this problem is our reaction at B, which I'm just going to assume that she is pulling it upward and reacting in an upward direction to lift this thing. So that would be BY, and I'm assuming in the upward direction. That's all I need to answer the questions here. So. What do we do? Well, we are in equilibrium here. So we can use three equilibrium equations to find our answer, which really we only need one of these. So we can sum forces in the x direction. Well, we really don't have any x directional forces here. So, and b sub y is a vertical reaction. So let's not use that one. F sub y, well, b sub y is in the vertical direction, but in order to use f sub y, I would also have to know what the ground reaction here is at the wheel for A sub Y. So not really a viable option just yet. So lastly, we are at our moments. And every moment about a certain point must cancel and be equal to zero. So it's in equilibrium. This we can use to find B sub Y if we sum moments down here at point A at the wheel reaction. Because if we sum moments down here, A sub Y, will go directly to this point. So it has no rotation through that point because it has no perpendicular distance. And then B sub Y would be our only unknown. So let's use that. So scrolling down here, let's go ahead and set up our equation. I'm gonna take counterclockwise as positive rotation. Everything in the clockwise direction will be considered negative for my equation. I'm summing moments about point A and it all has to be in equilibrium equal to zero. So let's first start with our 12, well, I put 12,000 pounds or 12,000 pounds, 12 gifts. That's a heavy wheelbarrow. Oh my goodness gracious. So it's 12 pounds of force, not, not 12 gifts. So we would have 12 pounds of force and it's perpendicular distance to get it over to A because it is a horizontal force or a vertical force. I just need a horizontal distance. So that would be six inches and it is rotating clockwise about point A. So that would be negative based upon my sign convention. All right, then let's move up to the 50 pounds. It's perpendicular distance to get it over to point A since it is a vertical force, horizontal distance, that is 12 inches. And it will also be rotating clockwise about point A. So that is also negative based upon my sign convention. And then lastly, I have B sub Y which its total distance over to point A is 40 inches. And that would be a horizontal distance because it is a vertical force. And it will be rotating counterclockwise about point A. So it is positive. And that is all I have for my moment about A. Well, we can rearrange and solve for B sub Y here because B sub Y is the only unknown in this equation. And when you do this, you will get 16.8 pounds 
<clears throat> and it came out to be a positive number. So that means my assumed arrow direction at the beginning of upwards was the correct one, which makes sense because when you pick up a wheelbarrow, you are pulling upwards. So this is not the final answer because it says right here, and this is where you got to watch out for some of these questions because sometimes they'd like to throw in this little trick here. It is not asking for the total force that she is exerting on the wheelbarrow is asking, what is it at each handle? So you got to watch out for these types of questions because they like to throw in those types of tricks. So this is the total amount of force that she must exert, which is 16.8 pounds. So for each handle, so there are two handles. So, oh my gosh, how about we go each handle instead of each four handle, each handle will just be my 16.8 pounds over two, which this will give me a total of 8.4 pounds in the upper direction on each handle. And that is my final answer. So it's kind of interesting to think that um, with a wheelbarrow like this, with this amount of distances and everything, that you can lift a 50 pound bag only exerting 8.4 pounds with each hand. Kind of cool to think of it like that. That's how you're able to lift so much more with a wheelbarrow. All right. So this is a reaction problem. And whenever you have a reaction problem, there's always a way to check your answers. Well, how would you check your answers in this case? Well, typically what we would do is that we would sum moments at the opposite point, the opposite reaction. Since we summed moments about point A here, right here, how about we sum moments up here at point B for our check? Well, in order to do that, we are gonna to have to determine what A sub Y is. Well, A sub Y is not super hard to get if we just sum forces in our Y direction here, which everything in blue will be our check version here. So if we sum forces in the Y direction up as positive, we would have A sub Y minus the 12 pounds, minus the 50 pounds, and then we would have plus the total at BY, which is 16.8 pounds. And that would all be equal to zero if I can squeeze it in over there. And then A sub Y will pop out to be 45.2 pounds in the upward direction. Okay, now with that answer, what we can do is that we can sum moments here at B. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so how about we save some room here? And let's see. That way we can also see the picture. So I'm going to erase this real quick, this FY reaction points. Hopefully I got all of it. We'll see. Yeah. All right, give me my pen back. Thank you. So let's sum moments here, and let's do it in blue for the check. So this will be our check of summing moments about point B, taking counterclockwise as positive. So we would have A sub Y, and that was 45.2 pounds. And its total distance over to point B is 40 inches in the perpendicular direction. It will be rotating clockwise about point B, so that is negative. And then I'm going to have my 12 pounds and my 50 pounds here. And both of these will be rotating counterclockwise about point B. So each of these will be positive. So plus 12 pounds times its distance over to B, which is 34 inches. And then plus 50 pounds times the 28 inches. And that's all I would have since B sub Y goes right through B. Don't include it. And that, in fact, does pop out to be zero. Once again, if it was a little bit off of zero, that's perfectly fine. That's just a little bit of rounding as long as you're not a terrible amount off from zero based upon the size of your answers. Since our answers here for A sub Y were 45.2 and B sub Y was 16.8, if you have something ranging from five to six pounds, yeah, you're pretty far off there. So um, zero point something for this uh, type of answer for your check would be perfectly fine because you what you usually do is whatever this value comes out to be is your check moment. You would just put that over your smallest answer and let's say it was like 0 0.01, for instance, was this instead of zero. That's a pretty small ratio right there. So that means you're pretty good. And usually when you're that small, you have rounding that is making the difference there. So as long as it's very close to zero, you know that your answers are, are good. You've checked it out. So I am confident to say that that 8.4 
is my answer for this particular question. Just keep in mind, whenever you have reaction problems, it's always best to check. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel as we're trying to upload daily and accumulate our inventory here. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.